Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about another discovery that seems to show us that we know very little about the universe itself. In this case, a new discovery that seems to suggest the universe is actually not the same everywhere as we've always believed. So let's talk a little bit more about this unusual concept of a nice atropy and welcome to what the math. So first of all, when it comes to the universe, um, we've always kind of made an assumption that for the most part, it seems to be kind of the same everywhere. More specifically, it seems to expand in every direction at relatively similar speed, or actually at the same speed. This is what a lot of modern physics is based on. But most importantly, it has actually been uh, thoroughly proven many times, especially by looking at very distant objects and more specifically by looking at the so-called cosmic microwave background, which does seem to indicate that the universe, for the most part, seems to be relatively similar all around us. But there is a problem with looking at these distant objects. Specifically, there is a problem with the CMB. It is really, really old. When this started to appear in the universe, the universe was only about 380,000 years old. So back then, Maybe the universe was actually the same everywhere, but does that mean that the universe is still the same everywhere? Well, according to some of the recent studies, and more specifically this study right here that very recently came out, it doesn't seem to be the case, and this kind of challenges a lot of facts that we've always taken for granted. And specifically one thing that this study challenges is the idea that the universe is expanding in every direction at the same speed. The study in this case shows that the difference in the speed of expansion seems to be up to about 30% different, suggesting that if we were to look at different directions in the universe, we would actually see expansion happening at different speeds. And that is a bit of a problem because up to today, up to now, we've always made all of our calculations based on the assumption that everything around us is the same. So for example, if we were to look at a really distant galaxy, which we can do right now by jumping to a random galaxy really, really far away from us, here we've always made the mass calculations and the um, distance calculations based on the same principle that everything is expanding everywhere at the same rate. But if it doesn't, it actually challenges a lot of these calculations and puts them in a bit of a pickle, I guess. But let's briefly also talk about how exactly the scientists determined all of this. For this particular study, what the scientists behind this paper did was use a very well known in astrophysics relationship between the amount of gas somewhere and the amount of X-ray radiation being released. This relationship has been confirmed in many different studies, but essentially here, the more gas we find somewhere in the universe, the more X-rays we'll discover. And this relationship is actually quite linear. So for example, if we were to look at these four galactic clusters you see right here, there is a direct relationship between the amount of gas present and the amount of X-rays each of them releases. And this relationship can obviously be quantified and we can definitely create all kinds of graphs trying to establish how much gas versus how much x-rays there are. And so for this particular study, the scientists behind this paper chose 313 different galactic clusters pretty much all across the night skies except for certain locations in the polar regions where they couldn't really have enough data. And they tried to analyze two types of relationships. First of all, they've established the relationship between the amount of gas and the X-ray brightness. So basically, here for example, let's just say we go to this galactic cluster and we measure the entire amount of X-ray radiation that's produced here. In this case, we can't really see it because this is just visual light, but they were able to use a lot of different data from different uh, telescopes, including the so-called XMM Newton and the Chandra telescope. Oh, and also another German telescope known as ROSAT. So by looking through all of this data and also combining all of this data into a really large table that you can actually find in their paper, they were able to create a relatively accurate representation of every single galactic cluster and every single measurement for the amount of X-ray luminosity that was produced by every one of these clusters. And while to their surprise, what they discovered was that there was actually a very unusual discrepancy. In certain areas, certain luminosities were either brighter or dimmer than they should have been, as if these large regions of space were either moving away from us or moving toward us at certain velocities. 
In other words, they were able to create this relatively accurate map of the discrepancy across the entire map of the universe, which actually showed us, or showed them that is, that the expansion shape of the universe is not uniform. It seems to be expanding faster in certain locations and slower in other locations. And that is somewhat hard to explain and actually currently creates a lot of problems for us because this means that in those particular locations we may have underestimated or overestimated certain galactic properties. But does this actually contradict the previous studies uh, related to the CMB? Well, not really, because what this is showing us is that even though the universe used to expand pretty much equally in all directions, it has changed over time and now seems to expand differently in different locations, and that is something we currently can't explain. Now, one really important side note here, Remember, this is only the first such study, so a lot and a lot of confirmation and possibly explanation is still needed to really determine what's happening here. The scientists themselves actually do mention this in the paper, and they do provide at least one opportunity for possibly having a mistake in the study. So there could have been some sort of a mistake somewhere. But it's still a really major discovery and a lot of scientists will probably be focusing on this right now because it does present us with a kind of a serious problem in terms of mass and distance and of course size calculations we've been making um, about other galaxies in the universe. And if for some unknown reason the universe is not the same in every direction, we still need to find a way to try to explain all of this as well. One of the potential explanations is that when the so-called dark energy was created, about which we unfortunately know very, very little, maybe it was created in different amounts across the universe. Now, because we don't know what dark energy is, what it could possibly be made out of, or if it even exists, this obviously creates a lot more problems as well. So right now, we kind of don't really know what's happening here, but one first thing we need to do is confirm the study and find out if what they're seeing is actually accurate. Because if these unusual patterns are actually correct, and for example, in one direction we're seeing 30% less motion than in the other direction, so in other words, the universe is not expanding at the same speed at all, yet it was actually expanding at the same speed when the CMB was created, this of course needs to have some sort of a natural explanation or at least some sort of a theory that can explain why the universe was created so unequally. But apart from dark energy distribution and possible mistakes in the study, another explanation here is the so-called dark flow. Now I've briefly talked about this in one of the previous videos, but essentially dark flow refers to this unusual gravitational attractor that's actually beyond the visible universe. In other words, it's sort of past the actual sphere of the entire universe that we can see. And this whatever gravitational attractor thing seems to be actually attracting a lot of galactic clusters toward it, reshaping how the universe behaves in that particular area. So it's quite possible that what we're observing here are actually the effects of various dark flows across the universe that seem to reshape how galactic clusters are moving and are thus creating all sorts of possible problems for our calculations later on. Now we have a similar, um, I guess you can call it phenomenon, here in our own galactic neighborhood and it's actually called the Great Attractor, you can kind of see it right here, and there's even a bigger one known as Shapeless Attractor. Both of these are these extremely large gravitational um, phenomena or anomalies, we have no better word for it really, we don't really know what they are. They could be a collection of dark matter, they could be extremely, extremely massive black holes, but the only thing that seems to unify them is the idea of attracting a lot of matter toward them. And they do create these unusual flows across the universe, at least in the local neighborhood. So basically they're attracting like thousands and possibly even millions of various galaxies in this particular area. So it's actually quite possible that this is exactly what's happening here as well, but right now we actually really just don't know. We know that something's happening here, we have no idea how to explain it. And honestly, I think a lot of scientists are really hoping that this is just an error or a mistake because otherwise it's going to create even more problems for cosmology that we currently can't really explain. But nevertheless, it is a great discovery and definitely something that a lot of scientists will be trying to investigate in the next few years. Which means that you should be subscribing to the channel because we're going to be talking about this in some of the future videos. Anyway, so that's really it. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to actually share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. You can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, 
and also feeling wonderful yourself every day as well. Either way, come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.